Hello, today is November 26th and this is Max Rempel speaking from San Diego. I'm reading now a book about Lyndon Johnson. And this is especially interesting because we can trace how the current system was formed of the politics, military, economy and brainwashing. So the main question is, what is the cabal and are the aliens in control or have the aliens been in control of our system, global system? So to summarize my current understanding, no one is actually in control. It is more or less uh, a collective irresponsibility, a system of collective irresponsibility. It would be nice to see someone in control and blame all the mischief on that person or a group. But it now looks to me that although there is a group of people uh, involved in the control of things, it is a huge group and it's it's largely irresponsible group of people. They don't, none, none of them is in control. Or if, there is no coordinated body of people in control or aliens in control or even spirits in control. I guess it makes the game even more interesting. So speaking about Lyndon Johnson, I have recently done the interview with Lyndon Johnson and John Kennedy through Jim, channeled by Jim. And I really like what came out because I read their biographies and I don't believe Jim re read these books and I don't believe Jim had the same insights into their biographies as I did. And the interviews showed that basically the, the interviews were real and it was real uh, Lyndon Johnson and real JFK behind Jim, which is nice. Just an another great confirmation for me. I feel... Uh, inspired. So the biography I read was uh, called The Path to Power of Lyndon Johnson by Robert Cara or Cara, by Robert A. Cara. The Years of Lyndon Johnson, The Path to Power by Robert A. Cara. See, it's an audio book. I really like it. Highly recommend it. Absolutely, incredibly, geniusly written. G geniusly researched and perfectly narrated. Realist evangelical religion. It was good for Leo Daniel and it's good enough for me, the Doughboys sang. So you see, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's perfectly narrated, perfectly written, uh, absolutely ingenious uh, research uh, by, by Kara. So there is so much detail, so much, so, so great feeling of the time, of the characters, of the motives, and uh, he's not making things pretty. He actually looks into deep, uh, motivating factors of the crime, and he keeps it neutral, more or less. Sometimes uh, Lyndon Johnson look look nice and sometimes he looks ugly it's pretty balanced and the movie came out i didn't watch it yet lbj and uh, the hypothesis is that lyndon johnson was somehow involved in assassination of kennedy and uh, when i started reading the book it was about his ancestors and his young years and uh, it was fascinating for, uh, for how he, how talented he was and how low did he start. It was very inspirational. How much can you do? You start from a very poor family with very little background and then you just grow and grow and grow. In power, 
And actually he did a lot of nice things as well. Bad things and nice things mixed together. But I, I, I became sick reading this book when I realized he might have killed John Kennedy. I identified myself so much with, Jeff, uh, with Lyndon Johnson, LBJ, that I couldn't bear a thought that uh, he he would he would be organizing the assassination of JFK. It was just too big of a sin. And later he was responsible for Vietnam War, so it is even bigger sin. So it was hard for me to take, so I just stopped reading. But when I spoke to JFK recently, look look at this interview on uh, YouTube Hukula TV. So he said that LBJ wasn't the organizer. He was likely aware, but wasn't involved in any way. So it made the reading more bearable, and I continued to read. So now I am in the year 1941. And by that time he acquired quite a lot of power, but not too much, not yet over the presidential level. But he already came, became close to the president, Franklin Roosevelt. So the book is so believable and it falls into great agreement with other books I read. And of course I asked in the interviews, I asked LBJ and, and JFK, what was their involvement with extraterrestrials. And check out, uh, JFK said that he was interested in extraterrestrials as much as he could, as much, as, as much time as he could spend on them. But LBJ was not. He, LBJ realized they would undermine his power. And they, but for that reason, he was not involved with, uh, with extraterrestrials. He told them, go away and come in 50 years. Maybe by that time we will be ready. And, and now it is time 50 years later. So we can see how the system became unified. But it wasn't unified at the time of, by, by 1941, at the time of Roosevelt. There were conflicting factions, big business monopolies, bankers, government, military, criminals, mafia, different countries, different, uh, different secret organizations of spies of different countries. But these factions were competing, they weren't unified. From the interviews which I did, we see that the aliens tried to sneak here and there, and they likely sneaked here and there, especially with the Nazis. And then from Nazis, that system likely was transplanted into United States and other allies so the aliens looked like it looks like they entered their secret military programs but i doubt that they were in complete control richard dolan writes about runaway civilization and there are other whistleblowers which speak about the runaway civilization. So it might have started from Nazis and then some American and international secret military programs might have joined it. But I doubt it, it is in control of the humanity. I think it's separate. There, there is likely an interface and the interface possibly with bankers, with the bankers and with the 
secret military projects and with, uh, with the governments and with the uh, industry. And because they are secret, there is a tendency to overestimate their power. But I think, I still think their power is limited. I think they have influence, but not power. Influence, but not control. So that's a great topic for investigation and discussions, and especially with the uh, channel discussions with uh, informed people and spirits. So I think it is pretty well balanced. We have the spirits, the angelic, the positive spirits, possibly the negative spirits and the uh, Luciferians, Luciferians, positive aliens, and hopefully not very many negative aliens. It looks like positive aliens right now are in control of the solar system. So the runaway civilization has the influence, but hopefully it's limited. And I'm also very fascinated with with the positive organizations of positive off-planet humans. I believe there are people, humans from Earth, born on Earth, who collaborate with the humans of the galaxy and generally wish and help the humanity. And with their technologies, they are off-planet, but they can easily visit the planet, the governments, negotiate, speak, talk, make plans, and influence. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, uh, through Jim, we interviewed a few of them. Some of them work with Girk Fitnir, so we spoke to some of them. I think we should do many more. Just speaking about Lyndon Johnson, he was a talented hacker. He hacked the system better than anyone else. There were many hackers, but he was one of the best ones. He was hardworking, determined, hungry for, for power, but had no moral limitations, no ethical principles. At least none of them were, were visible. He had a positive side and a negative side. And the negative one was largely in control of him. He started as a poor boy, but obviously he had huge talents from the past lives. So he was already born politician and he had a talent for bureaucracy bureaucratic and political games. He knew how to manipulate people and did it on an industrial scale. Many times he made decisions for the first time with a little preparation. And these decisions were very talented, very Ingenious. Sometimes he decided what to do, and other times he decided what not to do and what to avoid. He invented many things in politics. For example, he was fascinated with tape recorders and utilized them very efficiently. Another example, he used typewriters and the army of secretaries very efficiently. He made it industrial. Initially, it was two people working for him, but very soon it was many tens of people working for him. He created organizations which he was used very efficiently he was using very efficiently to hack the political, economical, military system. And I think his tragedy was that 
with all, all his talent and lack of moral, he hacked the system, but the system used him. He just became incorporated in the system, and the system had its own logic. So that's, I guess, the main philosophical question. That the modern human is flawed. The modern system is flawed. If you hug the system, it hugs you. You unite with the system, and it makes use of you. I don't think there is uh, any group of people who are in control, but the logic of the components, when the components come together as they are, they produce a flawed system, a sick system. So that's the predicament. The humanity is in trouble because When we combine what we have, we, got, we get a sick system. And it's not that we're genetically sick or supernaturally sick. The human is a human, the human is a programmable, programmable machine. It has a spirit, but there is a lot of program which the society writes in us. Part of this is from this life, part of this is from the past lives. But there is a pattern which is imprinted on humans. It's very artificial. And that program, when it's combined in multiple numbers, better say in large numbers, like in hundreds and millions, hundreds, thousands, and so on. It is flawed. We get what we get. It's not because of individual people or individual parties, but the combination of large numbers produces that negative result. When we come together in a society, it's hackable. The system is hackable. The human is prone to deception, and the system is prone to being hugged through deception. So the deception is the key flaw in the system. Even in a family, it's, it's, it's a trouble, but when it comes to millions of people, the trouble just is amplified. So I think we are doomed unless we solve this. And the solution is, of course, through mind reading. Something in the human design needs to be fixed. It is gullibility and inability to read minds. Now we need to learn how to read minds. Once we read minds, once we learn how to unite telepathically and empathically with other people, and once this penetrates the level of governments, then we escape the doom. So deception is a problem and telepathy is the answer. Hackability through deception is a problem. And transparency through mind reading and telepathy is the answer. I'm not sure how much help can we get from the outer humans and aliens. It looks like they have hands-off policy. Nobody can come and fix things for us. The only thing we, we could ask for is to teach us telepathy. We should learn telepathy and mind reading and spread this knowledge to others. 
Yesterday I was in Sedona making a commercial video for our telepathic workshop, Ascension <laughs> Channeling and Telepathy Workshop. And as I pass through Sedona, there is so many psychic reading offices on the street. Maybe every other office is psychic reading. I've never seen so high concentration of psychic readers. So it sounds like this could be the, the answer. We just need more of psychic reading and better quality of psychic reading. So let me give you an initiation. I'll give you a bit of attunement on the psychic reading. So raise your hand. Left hand. Repeat after me. I want to help humanity. I invite the gift of telepathy. I accept the gift of telepathy. And I'm grateful. And you can chant with me. Hi 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 oh my anna anna Hi 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 oh my anna Hi 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 oh my anna 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 Amma anna anna Hi 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 Ah anna 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 Oh my With that, I conclude. Have a good day.